Hello and welcome to Castle on Shadow episode 2. I'm at the Pirelli Stadium with none other than Marvin Sordell. Um, Marvin recently spoken about his own fight and he's going to explain a little bit more as to what he was going through. Um, Marvin, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here today. Um, it's been a long time coming. Uh, we've been speaking a lot on text, so pleasure. Um, if you'd like to tell us your story, um, just what just my experiences with mental health and depression and stuff. Yeah, you know, I struggled for a, quite a long time throughout my time at Bolton and you know, throughout my career, you know, along the line, and had a lot of lows, you know, that you know come part and parcel with football, but you know, they. I just I guess I didn't expect. Well, I didn't didn't realize where I was at. Um, so it's difficult to to really understand it, you know. So you had that um, Sky Show. You was on a Sky Show, wasn't you? A couple of years ago, Sky done a, a out series. Of contract. Out of contract. Yeah. That was it. It was out of contracts. Um, that kind of hit home to me as being a yourself being a football player and as a fan looking at future stars you know you started in uh, the Olympics with Great Britain um, that must have been an amazing experience and then to go from that and then a couple of years to out of contract and Sky doing a series on you it, it must have been quite daunting and you didn't know where to go like you said where to go what to do so yeah I think in in football and in general, it's a it's a you know a career in life that goes very up and down, and in very quick short bursts, and it's just about being able to you know to ride the lows and to you know to balance out the the highs. And I think I had a time where I was just completely out of, out of whack really and out of sorts, and the lows were very very low and the highs felt you know ridiculously high almost at times, and. Being a football player, how did you feel like that? Um, could you feel like you could open up? Could you feel like you could talk to anybody? No, I mean, at the time I didn't really understand what was going on. I just thought that, you know, I'm just down because at the time I hadn't been playing a lot of football. So that's, you know, the biggest thing is you just think, you know, if I was playing then I'd be, I'd be fine. But see, there was a, it was a much more deep rooted issue. And, you know, I think when I eventually got to a point where it was visible to my girlfriend and I went to see someone to get help then I realised actually how, how bad it was. Um, what help did you get? Did you open up to the doctor? The yes, I saw a, a doctor for, I can't even remember how long now, but it felt like a long time. <laughs> but we had just a lot of conversations and I opened up a lot and it definitely helped me to you know, through the period, but it didn't, I guess, cure me in a sense. And, you know, I tried to do many different things. I, you know, I moved clubs several times and I had a very rocky period in, in over a space of you know, four years, I think, where I went from being in the England under 21s and, you know, playing for Team GB in, in at Premier League team to going down to League One. Yeah. And, I think with all with all the the changes and stuff, it was once I got to down to League One and and I guess the pressure was off. There was more time and more just more. There was just more more of an opportunity for me to just not an expectation and reflect yeah. and to understand where I'm at right now and to just to. Know, understand everything that's going on and, and, and then go from there. Did you, when you was going through your talks with the doctor, did you explain anything in the changing room? Did you talk to anybody? Or did you kind of keep it between you, the doctor, and your girlfriend? Was that? Yeah, it was literally just just that at the time because I didn't know how it was going to be 
perceived that oh, like, everybody's going to do it. You know, the laughing, the joking, and changing yeah. rooms and so forth. And of course, at the time I was, you know, when you're when you're young in football as well, it's not just young in football, but when you're a young man and you're finding yourself as a person and you're not completely secure in yourself, it's it's hard to 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 own something like that. I totally agree. I totally agree. Where, where do you see yourself in the future? Um, we've already discussed off 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 camera that you've got loads of projects coming up. But explain to people what you would like to see happen. What does Marvin want to see? F I hopefully, because I've been fighting for this as well, to get football to open up a little bit more. And people like yourself coming out is absolutely unbelievable, because that gives another sense of belief. The the fans tonight were amazing. Um, and you explaining what you've been through opens up a different door to so many other people. Mm. Uh, I've noticed that with the walks and so forth, it's just like literally blown up over four years. And where, where do you see your pattern taking you? Well, for a start, I just want to talk more. You know, like we're having this conversation now. I want to, I want to do more to, to raise awareness. You know, I'm working with Calm as well. I'm working with um, Calm as well. Um, I want to. I want to help to raise awareness. I want to speak to other people. You know, I've, I've been contacted by tons of people, including football players. And you've seen football players have spoken about it. Do you think it's a big problem within football players? Obviously, well, the biggest stat is men under forty-five. It's the biggest killer of men under forty-five is suicide. Mm -hmm. So common sense states that there's going to be a lot of players that are going to be yeah. suffering. Yeah. Um, I looked around again tonight, and I pointed out. There's a lot of young lads here, mm. and you could be a massive influence, and will be a massive influence to these people. They will look up to you and go, it's okay for him to talk, mm. let me talk. And that's kind of what we're getting at. And mm. the more we talk, the better it is, the more people open up, the more there's a massive understanding. It's, over the last couple of years, I've seen massive change in the way that mental health has been perceived. When I first started a walk to uh, Reading four years ago, everybody laughed at me. Now, the same people that laughed at me, are the same people talking to me and asking me advice. <laughs> okay, where do I start? What do I do? And it's just literally just blowing up and everybody keeps talking about it. And like I said, with you coming out, I, I think it's superb explaining everything. I, I, I'll put a link up to the interview that you've done. Um, Do you see more football players coming out? Do you see? Would you like, but uh, but an album? We're here today to have like a room like we've got here to open up for the fans to come in, have a talk, an hour a day or hour of an evening once a week, just to open up, talk, and realise that they're not alone and have like a not not a club, not more a group gathering sort of thing where people can sit down, talk, and ease their troubles and understand I think that's the biggest reality is, is that no one understands that they're not alone they always mm. think they're battling on their own mm. they don't know where to turn what to do who to talk to and I think football clubs should that's what we're fighting for and I still could fight mm. for it to open up and understand that there was a bigger problem in helping your fans out your fans are going to help you out a lot more mm. like what players opening up yeah play that, that, that's it that is it like as well, I think for a start, there's strength in numbers, in and I think the the thing in football is players don't want to talk about you know them being depressed or suffering from mental health because they may be perceived as weak and and you know may harm their career and I I guess I'm at a stage now where I'm I'm beyond that <laughs> yeah, so getting older now I'm, I'm I'm older and wiser and and you know. I've been high, I've been low, I am who I am, and How'd I am who I am as a player, so you either take me or leave me. So yeah, I think, I think when players see uh, other players op and opening up and talking about it, the more players are talking about it, the harder it is for, for them to be singled out as a negative for it, because, because it would just be common. And I think, you know, the, you, you'd be surprised I think if, if every player just you know I guess anonymously said 
had they ever suffered from mental health problem, I'd, I'd, I would say the percentage would be, you know, 50, 60 plus. Easy. I think a high percentage of players would, would have suffered from some sort of mental health problem at some point. Since you're speaking out and coming out and talking about your own troubles, what has been the perception with the players? Have the players, like, a lot of people texted you and said, I have suffered this, I've suffered that. Obviously, no names, but some yeah, a few a few from have contacted me on on social media. A few players from other clubs I didn't you know have any relation to or have or know. Um, players that that I play with here, you know, just sending messages of goodwill and stuff. And people have been exactly the same, really. How do you um, feel since speaking out and coming out? Do you feel just like a weight lifted off your shoulders? Do you feel like you're new? Well. You've been injured for the last couple mm. of weeks, so it was nice to see you running on the pitch today. Nice little touches, mm. absolute superb, absolute amazing to see you play again. Do you think it's gonna? Oh, I'm not going to this. Do you think that since coming out, it's totally changed you as a person? You feel more relaxed. It's a weight off your shoulder. Yeah, I feel like I can walk around and and be very comfortable in, in who I am because I know that. This is me sharing, and you know, having seen that sharing my story is just—it's just who I am. It's you know, it's just part of my journey, and and I I don't worry about how I'm perceived because of it. Yeah, because of, because I've just owned it and 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 said you know this is it. There isn't anything else to it, and you know, on the back of that, I've also got to talk about you know what I enjoy doing. Which is obviously writing and, and making film. Okay, so that's new to me. <laughs> that's new to me. I never knew that. I never knew that. Oh, love you, man. I got you. a big thank you to Marvy for taking his time out to do this after the game. Uh, Marvy was kind enough to sign a program, which is on our Twitter handle, which is Cast No Shadow M M H. Retweet that and be in a chance for winning. Look forward to speaking to everybody very soon. Got a lot more interviews coming up. Let's be the change, let's be the difference. Till next time, keep smiling.